In this video, you're going to learn how to improve your guitar phrasing by using rubato on the guitar. How do you use rubato to improve your guitar phrasing? I'll show you how later in this video. Now, I've taught this stuff to thousands of my online students from around the world, and today I'm going to teach it to you. So, to improve your phrasing immediately, use the tips that I'm going to share with you in this guitar solo lesson video. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and today I'm going to give you guys a big guitar phrasing tip by showing you how to apply rubato to improve your phrasing. Now, many great guitar players such as Yngwie Malmsteen or Eddie Van Halen or Paul Gilbert or Jason Becker and countless others use rubato to make their guitar soloing sound really incredible. So first, I'll explain what rubato, sometimes called tempo rubato, is and show you how much better lead guitar playing becomes when you use it you'll see how rubato really helps you to improve your phrasing. Next, I'll show you a really cool harmonic minor guitar lick played with rubato. I'll include all the tab for you too so that it's easy to learn. Then I'll show you how rubato can be used to make arpeggios, even simple ones, sound more melodic. Our fourth guitar phrasing tip uses a simple scale run, but once we add rubato, the phrasing is vastly improved. The best thing about this guitar phrasing lesson is that rubato can be applied to any lick at any time, and the result is better phrasing when you play guitar solos. First, what is rubato? Rubato is a musical concept where you stretch time. So if you think about a series of notes, perhaps straight eighth notes or a bunch of sixteenth notes, they're played pretty mechanical, right? 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e, or 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. The tempo is really strict. If you've ever recorded anything or made up anything using MIDI on a computer, when the computer plays it back, it's typically played with no rubato, very strict, very mechanical sounding. Now that sound can be cool sometimes, but it can often sound more musical when we gradually speed up and gradually slow down within certain phrases. Now, I'm not talking about playing out of time because someone doesn't know how to keep time. I'm talking about being able to stretch the time, accelerate, decelerate certain phrases to make them sound more melodic and doing so intentionally, not by mistake or by error or by not knowing how to keep time. All right, let's take a look at example number one. This comes from the A harmonic minor scale. And as you see, it's written out pretty much just all straight 16th notes. I'm going to play it for you just that way without any rubato in the tempo, just so you can hear what it sounds like when you play it straight and sort of mechanical-like without any life to the phrasing in terms of rubato. So it's a cool lick. But when you play it straight like that, it, it's not very dramatic yet. I mean, harmonic minor is a dramatic scale, so there's some drama there in the notes, but there's not really any dr drama in how I'm phrasing it or how I'm playing it until you get to the last note and then you hear a little vibrato at the end, then it gets cool. But prior to that, it's kind of just dry, okay? so. Let's now take that same lick and let's apply rubato to it. So what I'm going to do, I want, what I want you to imagine is like a curve, okay? And this curve, this line, imaginary line here, represents speed or time. So I'm going to start off slow and then gradually increase the speed and then get slow again towards the end, all right? So starting slow, getting faster, and then getting slower at the end. So we're stretching the time and then we're collapsing the time, all right? So here's what that would sound like. You know how much different that is? Slower in the beginning, then sped up towards the middle, and then slower at the end. That, to me, sounds a lot cooler, a lot more expressive than just playing it straight. All right, let's take a look at example number two. This is just a little C major arpeggio with one other note added. That note would be F, which is the fourth or the eleventh of that chord. And here's what it sounds like, just played straight. It's pretty dry. There's not a lot of life 
uh, in the way that I played it. The notes are cool, but the way I played it wasn't really that interesting, right? It was just kind of, kind of mediocre, kind of bland. The vibrato at the end and the final note helps, but if I take the vibrato out, you see how boring this becomes. Right? They're, they're kind of just notes. If we apply rubato, not to be confused with vibrato, if we apply rubato to the tempo, well, now we can shape the phrase a bit more. So if we approach this in a similar way as we did the first example, where I start off kind of slow, and then I speed up a little bit as we get towards the, the middle of the lick, and then I slow down towards the end, now the phrase starts to have more life to it. Uh, and you'll hear the difference. Let me do it again. So there was a little bit different version of it. There I started off pretty quickly and then slowed down a lot. So each time I'm changing how I'm applying rubato to the phrase and each one feels a little bit different. And that's the point here is you can, with playing the exact same notes, just by changing the emphasis on the speed, you know, the, the rubato, where you're pushing forward with the speed and where you're holding back or pulling back on the speed makes a big, big difference in how the licks feel. So when you do this across multiple licks in a solo, it sounds really, really interesting, especially when you mix it up and vary up, you know, which notes have rubato on it, which notes or which licks have rubatos on it, which one does not, and how you apply the rubato to each lick, it could be different every time. It's a very, very cool effect. It helps your phrasing sound better immediately. Okay, let's take a look at example number three. This is basically just a harmonic minor scale. It's played pretty straight. Um, we've got a, the very first note is raked, so I'm doing this. I'm picking across all the strings, or at least most of them, but I'm muting those strings with the left hand, and then you, the only note you really hear is the final note, the note, uh, sorry, the first note that's written, which is the 16th fret of the high E string. The rake is just a percussive sound. And we have a nice rubato note at the end. So harmonic minor scales are cool. They sound passionate and dramatic all by themselves, but as it's written, it's pretty, it's pretty dry even for a scale that is not dry because it's just straight 16th notes. Cool, but not really cool. Okay, I mean, it, it has the potential to be cool. It's just not super cool yet. All right, but if we apply some rubato to this, now it starts to get more interesting. So, for example. Isn't that more interesting than the first couple ways that I played it? I started off slower, kind of dug into the notes a little bit harder, and then it got a little bit more fluid and faster towards the middle, and then I applied some palm muting and slowed down towards the end to kind of pull back on the speed there. So it makes a big difference. And by the way, if I slow that down so it's not quite as quick, It's still cool because there's this difference, this change in the speed of the notes. It's not 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E, and it's not just robotic like that. So by, again, by adding rubato in, you take a lick that would ordinarily be okay, the notes are cool, but the phrasing's not really that cool, and you make it cool by adding things in like the rubato. It makes a huge difference, and it makes a big difference immediately, right away. You, you really hear the difference in how it feels. All right, let's talk really quickly about how to practice this. I mean, how would you use rubato when practicing? Well, what I think you should do here, what I recommend is to feel the outsides of the lick. So if you've got a lick and it's eight notes long or 24 notes long or whatever, think about the starting point and the ending point and put your emphasis on those places. So in most of the examples, that I gave you. I started off slow and ended slow, and then the faster stuff was in the middle. You could do the exact opposite, okay? You could start fast and end fast while getting slow in the middle. 
You could do any other combination. It doesn't have to be in three parts. It can be in two parts, fast, slow, slow, fast. It could be in four or five parts, okay? You can do whatever you want, but I think to get started, just focus on what you really want the speed of the beginning to be and the speed of the end to be, and then whatever is in the middle would be the opposite of that. So if you're slow here and here, then you're fast here. If you're fast here, then you're slow here. Okay, so that's something that I think will help you to think about as you practice. And, you know, when you're doing this, if you practice with the metronome, for now, turn the metronome off. You can, you can come back to the metronome later and add it back in. But for now, do it in free time. Don't practice to a metronome, just play freely. Get used to this concept of stretching the time and collapsing it. And then, when you feel comfortable with that, bring the metronome back in and then do it with the metronome. You'll notice, when you do that, that the notes that you're playing won't necessarily, especially in the middle of the lick, won't necessarily line up with the clicks of the metronome. That's okay, because you're thinking about where you're starting and where you're ending, and those notes typically are going to line up, the first and the last note. What happens in the middle does not need to line up. It's more free time, where you're kind of cramming the notes within the measure or whatever. So think about that, and that will help you a lot. Let me give you some things to listen to. If you listen to the first 15 seconds or so of Van Halen's Eruption, back from the first Van Halen record, I think it was released in 1978, that whole first half of that first solo really is using tempo rubato. So Eddie Van Halen plays a lot of cool stuff. The licks are cool. The phrases are cool. But if you would take those licks from Eruption, especially the first half of Eruption, and enter them into a computer and listen to the computer play them straight in strict time, those licks are not very cool anymore. What makes those licks really cool is what Eddie Van Halen did with the licks, how he phrased them and how he used rubato. That's what makes that solo just sound so awesome. Even today, all of these years and decades later, it's still a great, great sound and the, his use of rubato makes it sound just incredible. Let me know in the comments section what types of topics you would like me to make new videos on. I read every single comment. I try and reply to most of them that have a question in nature, and I really do read them. So, you know, when you write, you know, hey, can you make a video on this or on this or on this, there's a good chance that I will in the future. So, if you like this video, subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. If you want to learn how to make any lick you know sound even better, I'll show you how in my new free ebook titled The Secret to Adding Fire and Emotion to Any Guitar Lick. It's free. Click on the link below to download your copy and make every lick that you know sound even better.